um, to come in here and, and listen to um, the panelists that Amanda have brought for you today. She uh, comes to us each month with just uh, wonderful panel speakers and they provide such amazing information. So thank you to Amanda for organizing uh, such an awesome event. I do want to point out, just real quickly, if you haven't um, picked up our November calendar, it is out. Um, the classes are filling up quickly, so some of them already have a waiting list. So make sure you look through the calendar and, and let us know, and we'll be happy to register you. One um, event that I do want to point out uh, is our yoga retreat. We do this Ooh. a couple times a year. So on November the 9th, it's a Saturday. If you're looking for some mindfulness, some relaxation, and a focus on gratitude, we'd love to have you for our yoga retreat. And Amanda, correct me um, if I'm wrong, but I believe November and December, there are no senior book events. But starting in January, we will have those um, coveted, wonderful lunch and learn that she puts together. Our dates for those fell so close to Thanksgiving and Christmas that we decided to skip So look for Monday. But with that, I'm just going to hand over um, the, uh, the room to Amanda and her panel and the experts. So, all right. If you do not have a primary care position, make sure you are down with these folks out here. So you'll see me hobbling around, which is very unlike me. Most of you know um, that I'm usually bouncing around the room, but I have a bulging disc in my back, which is not as much fun as it sounds. <laughs> and I do not have one pinch nerve, I have lots of pinch nerve, but I'm actually feeling much better today. Um, but I'm going to stand for probably this whole thing because I can't get up and down. <laughs> so we have a dynamic group of panelists here today. I'm really excited about this. I think a lot of you have waited a while to hear them talk because we always get different questions about continuing care retirement communities. They are all so very different and yet some of them are very much the same. So we're here today to explore the differences between them and kind of go over some of the details. Um, again, as most of you know, this is very interactive, so I want to make sure if you have a question, just raise your hand. You can ask anyone up here pretty much anything, and if they can't answer it, they'll make an appointment to talk to you after. I'm sure they'd be happy to do that as well. Um, we'll start by introducing everyone. I do want to bring one thing to attention. Um, it's like Christmas for me. The, the new books are out, and they are in your bags. So the brand new Senior Blue books, you got to take a look at that. Um, and then you also have some flyers uh, for upcoming events that are going on um, for Seniors Blue Book throughout Lee and Collier County. We just didn't do them here because that week fell right into the holiday weeks. So we'll start over here with Fred. Fred, you want to tell them a little bit about who you are, where you're from, and we'll just move it down the line. Good morning, everyone. I am Fred Machetta um, from the newest campus developing in town here at Siena Lakes. We are in Naples on Orange Blossom, just east of Airport Pulling. Um, Santa Lakes is being developed and will be operated by Erickson Senior Living out of Baltimore, Maryland. And our company is 36 years old. Santa Lakes is our 20th campus across the country that we are developing. And I myself have been with the company for 26 years. And I just moved here a year ago full time to develop this campus from Michigan. Anybody else from Michigan? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm still waiting for the cool temperatures that everyone says would hit in October. So I haven't seen that yet. So I'm hoping for that's going to be starting soon. But thank you. And uh, again, glad to take any questions as we're moving along. Good morning, everyone. My name is Lynn Talbot. I'm a life plan counselor with Senior Choice at Home. This is a life plan in your home. Um, we are actually located in Cape Coral part of the Gulf Coast Village community, which is a CCRC. Um, I do live in Cape Coral, so I love the community. Um, Gulf Coast Village has been around for 30 years, so um, great quality of care there. And I've been with the company since March, so I'm still fairly new, but very happy to be here. Hello, everybody. My name is Jeannie Hendricks, and I'm the clinical nurse liaison at Shell Point Retirement Community. Uh, now, Shell Point has been around for over 50 years, so we're the single um, largest single site CCRC in Florida and the second largest in the nation. And we have a stellar marketing company, so 
So you probably have heard a lot about Shell Point, but I just want to caution you that most people don't really have the full picture. So I hope that you will um, open your your minds to CCRCs and what they can afford, what you can uh, afford and what's available to you. You have in Florida some of the most amazing CCRCs in the country, and there's about 2,000. And we all work closely together, but we're all different. So I think our, my colleagues would say the same, is you need to shop around. So it's nice to be here, and thank you for coming. Hello, everyone. My name is Vanessa DePaulo. I'm the director of sales at your local continuing care retirement that called the Terraces here in Benita Springs. We're currently the only one in the area. And we're one of your smaller boutique style communities all under one roof. So we are different than our competitors, but certainly to each his own. Um, just like uh, the team has said here, it's, it's so smart to look around because they're all so different, have different feels, and all of you are different and want different things. So we look forward today to answering all your questions. I've actually only been at the terraces for a month, um, but I'm already up to speed. I was at Maureen's Park for the last four years, so I have lots of uh, knowledge on the local market and the continuing care space. Look forward to chatting with you all. Good morning. My name is Cassandra Panting, and I am the Director of Marketing and Sales for the Glenview at Pelican Bay. And yes, we're part of the Pelican Bay community, that beach community. We're very, very small as well. We only have 118 apartments. We've been around since 1992. And we are, in fact, very unique to Florida. In fact, we're Florida's only pure equity ownership life care community. Okay. I always say I don't need a microphone because I can talk loud enough. But Okay, so we are going to start out with, with the icebreaker questions, but keep in mind and remember what I've told you. We really, we're here for you. We want to hear your questions. These are just questions that I've come up with thinking if you don't know to ask it, it's probably a good one to ask. So I want to start with just asking the basic question, and I'll, I'll do this with Janine. What is a CCRC or a continuing care retirement community? Well, CCRC stands for Continuing Care Retirement Community, and it's really just a business model, uh, a model of care. And it was started over 100 years ago in Pennsylvania, actually. And so there are, oh, I mentioned, over 2,000 CCRCs in the country. Um, and so you have a lot to choose from, but it's just, and pretty much all of them have the four levels of care. So it's the level of independent living, which is what you're enjoying right now in your own home. Then the second level would be assisted living, which means that you uh, might need help with two or more uh, activities of daily living, like bathing and dressing. And then the third level would be memory care, which is specialized support services for all the different aspects of dementia care. And then the fourth would be skilled nursing, which is your professional 24-hour licensed nursing care, which could include physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech therapy. And those are the four main levels of care in the CCRC. Question? Yeah, Janine. Yeah, okay, the next really good question is going to be for Fred. Fred, tell us the difference between a life care community and a CCRC. So the difference between a life care and a CCRC a life care can be a CCRC, and there are many options, as everybody has said, in the local area, which benefits you. A life care is when you're moving into a community in independent living, you are paying for that lifestyle, whether you're using it in a monthly fee, at that point in time when you're moving into independent living, you're going to pay the same in assisted living, and any level of care you move up, you're gonna continually pay the same fee whether you're using that level of service or not. Most often, you might look and see the differences between a life care and other options. The monthly fee tends to be a little bit higher, and they also may have some health requirements or a doctor's exam for you to pre-qualify to move into the community prior to that as well. Um, other communities like um, Siena Lakes, we are a type C contract. In fact, we're the only one in town with the type C contract, where you are only paying for the level of care in which you're living in at that moment in time. And in our 36 years, we've recognized 
that only 20% of our residents ever use the higher level of care, and only 5% are using skilled nursing. So we're, we keep your monthly fees lower rather than escalating it to a higher level of care that you may or may not use. I see everybody taking good notes, I love it. Yes, ma'am. I have a question. Um, if both, uh, well, in our situation, my husband and I are both uh, live together, that's number one, <laughs> which is kind of refreshing. Yes. Um, if you say, if you start out at independent living, mm -hmm. and then if, say, I become ill faster than my husband, mm -hmm. then how does that work? Are you living separately in the same community? I'm, I'm confused and don't They're know They're all a little different. They're all a little different. Who wants to take that? I'll start. If somebody else, we can pass that on. Um, the goal is definitely to keep people as active and together as long as possible. And if we can support one spouse needing some additional support, you could do that by bringing home support in. If that's an hour in the morning, an hour in the afternoon, or an hour in the evening, part of the uh, concerts we may have, other events, going to the restaurants, family visiting, friends visiting, it's all very convenient having all those levels of care just in case that somebody may need that extra level of support. I'll just ask, does anybody have the option to stay, I mean, I know you do, Lynn, but do you have the option of getting assisted living in your same apartment where you don't have to move? Okay. At the Glenview, we actually believe that assisted living, it's a philosophy. We believe assisted living should be in your home where you feel that you've got really the um, control, still independence. So our nurses actually come to you rather than you going to a place called assisted living. So our, act, our nurses come to you. So if in fact you you know want, want to be together, you can stay together for as long as you can. I can tell you that we had somebody that just died, but she stayed in her home and she was 108 years old. And she did that and she said there's great you know, I mean, it was just great the fact that she got to live in her own home around the things that she liked, felt very independent, felt very much in control of her life right to the very end, and that was to help with assisted living in the home. Okay. All right, we'll jump to, yes, sir. I have a question regarding the financial implications of the two levels. If my wife is then uh, independent and if I move in, into memory care, what would be the financial ramifications of such a move? So the question there is if we have a spouse living in two different levels of care, what could that cost be? Um, you would have two separate uh, monthly fees based on the level of care of which you're living in, but also the independent side would have decreased because there's only one person living there. So that savings there would incur a new monthly fee, again, to either assisted living, memory care, or skilled nursing, would incur a new monthly fee at that point. They're not always doubled. They're different at all of our campuses. Um, there certainly is, seems to be an average in the Naples, Fort Myers area as well. So again, it will benefit you from doing your research and finding out what are those fees, what are your income that you're working with? What is the budget you made for yourself? Or do you have a long-term care policy to also support that? At Sienna Lakes, we also go that extra step as well. For 36 years, Erickson Living has always offered our residents a home for life. And if they ever exhaust their assets while living in our communities, and they could not afford their monthly fee, we will not ask a resident to leave for financial reasons. They will always have a home at Sienna Lakes and any of our Erickson communities. One thing as far as we are all different in that pricing, which is great, so you have options. Um, at Shell Point, we have four different kinds of contracts. And by far, 95% of the people that come to Shell Point buy the life care contract, which just means that you are covered for life. So all contracts, you buy in with an entrance fee one time and then a monthly maintenance fee. And so the beauty of a life care contract is that it is predictable. So when you or your spouse needs to move to a different level of care, you're still maintaining the same monthly maintenance fee that you signed up for. Uh, this is the life care contract. So also, 
if you have a spouse, then there can be two people living in two different higher levels of care for the same original monthly maintenance fee that you signed up for. So this important, um, that's one of, the li one of the contracts. That's why most people buy, so that no matter what you need, no matter what your spouse needs, if you have to split up and one goes to skilled, one goes to assisted living or stays in the home, you still have one monthly maintenance fee. So it's a predictable, it's really buying health care tomorrow for today's rate. And it's also, now you know exactly what it's gonna cost you. That's the beauty of life care. But there also is a life care contract that has a refundable, 75% uh, refundable fee. So it is life care and includes independent living, skilled living, assisted living, memory care, all of those components, but you have, can um, get 75% refundable of the entrance fee. And people say, well, why in the world would you not want that one? 75% of your refundable fee because it's 58% higher buy-in for your entrance fee. People do that so that they can protect their assets, you know, for family, for their estate, and for their trust. And then the third kind, you know, we have a, a B contract too, which many people do, and that's modified, meaning everything, your entrance fee and your ma monthly maintenance fee is 15% lower. That gets you independent living and all the amenities. It gives you assisted living. It gives you memory care assisted living. It does not include skilled nursing. People that buy that have really good long-term care policies, and so they feel like they're covered in the skilled nursing facility. So they would choose that contract. And then we have the C contract, which is 100% refundable. That is the fee-for-service contract, meaning that you get a, independent living is where you move in, but everything else, assisted, um, memory care, and skilled nursing is at a fee for service, whatever the private pay rate is that time. Yes, ma'am. Okay, let's get real. Okay. <laughs> I like this woman. <laughs> right. Okay, what about two people, man, woman, whatever, they're not married, they're sharing one unit, okay? Mm -hmm. They both get to keep their social security Okay, because otherwise if they get married, one the woman has to drop first, okay, mm -hmm. and they have to survive on his, whatever. Is this allowed in these places? Mm -hmm. yeah, I think okay. you'll need, everybody will be different, and that's something that you'll need to investigate. And um, as far as, if you're asking me at Shell Point, uh, we do not have that in our contract. You will need to be, it's married, a man and a woman, and they need to be married to share. We do have a lot of couples at Shell Point that have independent residences together. Uh, they're not living together. But that's just so. At Sienna Lakes, you can be a couple living together and have separate income, don't have to be married. We have siblings that are moving in together. We even have a mother and a daughter moving in together. There's numerous scenarios that we could work with for you and the contract is the contract and it's not based on uh, being a couple in any way at all. So same sex Yes. People can live together. Yes, they can. Same sex couples can still be together as a couple. You are correct. Okay. If you're living with, for example, a sister and you have to pass a financial entrance and a medical entrance, does that sister have to qualify financially as well as you, or can it just be you and not the sister? The question there is, if two sisters are living together, how is the financial um, approved? Um, prior to anybody moving in, we always do a financial review to make certain that you can afford to live in the floor plan that you're choosing to reserve and move into. How that income is done that when we are sitting down with you between two people, whether they're married or they're not, it's a combined income, or it's a combined asset. So it doesn't have to be based on one. At the Glenview, you purchase your own home. I um, wanted to say that all of the people um, need to financially qualify. Certainly we take sisters, brothers, uh, uh, same-sex marriage, those sorts of things. You do not have to be married to be at the Glenview, but you do financially have to qualify individually uh, for it. And the terraces is the same as Sienna Lakes, um, where we have family members residing together and they're joined and come together on the application. So we're the same as Sienna Lakes. So this is, I think, um, as we're drilling down into small questions, you're gonna find that it's gonna, it's, 
it varies community to community and that is why it's important to really sit down because these are the granular questions and everyone's circumstance is different. Um, you know, we, we're talking about type C contracts, type A contracts, type B, we're all different. But the premise is the same, right? That we all have different types of contracts that we're offering you, but we're all saying you at least can get your care inside of our communities. Or as, as you're gonna be talking about as well, um, they have options of different communities that you can go to under their contract. So these are great questions, but it just depends as we look at it, each community specifically. <laughs> and that is, you know, okay, so you get into one, whether you are sharing with a roommate or husband, spouse, or whatever, okay, but you get in on a normal thing and you um, uh, are there, okay, but then you're running out of money after a few years, okay, and you're not going to be kicked out, right? You wind up being on Medicaid instead of Medicare or whatever, but you're not going to get kicked out. You're not going to lose the roof over your head, is that what's happening? They, I, I want to start by, yeah, I was, I want, Vanessa, I'm going to give it back to you. There's a reason why they do that financial assessment, and it's that very reason. They're, they're governed by the insurance regulations to make sure that they are able to do that. I'm going to hand it back to you. Yeah, that's a great question. Just ask about what happens if I run out of money, right? I mean, 2008 happened. A lot of people passed their financial uh, qualifications in that year, and a lot of people lost all that they had. And that's where it's important for you to read the fine details of these contracts because I can guarantee you it just varies. Um, I can speak to the terraces and honestly I'll speak to the Maureen's Park contract because I know it so well. It does have a paragraph in there that says, if you do run out of funds, we will first look to your refund for, let's say you had a 90% refund coming back to you. They're gonna start to draw down from your refund. That's the first thing they're gonna do. Then they're going to look at your insurances. Is there some, there money in the insurances, a long-term care policy, your Medicare, where can we draw fund from for funds? But then it does say in there, if you're still tapped out of resources, they will most likely make you move into a smaller sized residence. Let's say you're in the big one, they're going to make you downsize, but they are going to pay for your lifetime of care from that point on. So you just have to read the contract. I'm not sure if anybody else wants to answer that. It's different. Um, so at Shell Point, we are a 501c3, so we do have subsidies, we have benevolent fund, and so if through no fault of your own you find yourself That's unable... That's the key word. No. Through no fault of, through no fault of your own, <laughs> you find that you cannot make your monthly maintenance fee, we do have a subsidy program, we do have a benevolent fund which works very well. If you didn't know, we are, we're mission, uh, Christian Missionary Alliance Foundation, which is why it was started basically as a Bible camp for missionaries. It's no longer that anymore, but the same principles apply. We're there to serve people and to care for people. And so, and that's what we do. So, and Santa Lakes is exactly as Amanda said, in the contract as it says, as long as you have not violated the contract, and in 26 years, I have seen a couple of times where the contract was violated, where maybe family members have depleted their parents' assets without them knowing. But other than that, if you were following the terms of the contract and after spend down, we do a financial review with you to make certain that your income is still being used for your outside expenses outside of Siena Lakes. So we want to make sure that you're paying all your other bills with the income you have. And if for some reason there could be money left over, we may only collect $20 a month from you if that's all it is. And we don't ask anyone to downsize their home. And that is something we have never done. Even though we have 23 different floor plans, we don't ask anyone to downsize their homes. <laughs> You've had your hand up for a while. The entrance fee? If you're talking about 
about the entrance fee at Shell Point, it is depending on the location and size of your unit. I think that's almost and, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's basically wherever you live. If you live in a small garden size, 470 square foot, compared to a three bedroom executive home, if you have a garden view, if you're looking over the marina, those are going to be different. So it's size of your unit and location of your unit. Depends on your entrance fee as well as your monthly maintenance fee. Yes, well, if you are married, then there is a surcharge. It's around seven, six hundred fifty, seven hundred dollars for the second person, for your spouse. So that's instead of being double, like if the the if the monthly fee was sixteen hundred, then it would be sixteen hundred plus the seven hundred or six fifty, whichever unit you choose for the second person for your spouse. And we do have sometimes disabled children living with their parents or, or siblings. There are exceptions for that. But just in general, for the second person, there is a surcharge. But it's the same entrance fee. If you would go away, if the person went away? Yes. <laughs> yes. Is everybody the same? We don't have an entrance fee. Because you purchase your own home, you know, you're paying cash for it, so you're purchasing your own home. Um, of course, you have a monthly, and that monthly is dependent whether you come in as a, as a second person, the second person's part of that, or whether it's just individual, but that's the only thing that just changes. We do have a, what we call an exit fee, and that's when you no longer need your money anymore. And we'll take 15% as our exit fee, and we'll sell your home for you, um, and you won't be paying any kind of commission on that, so we'll be selling it, and we're a nonprofit. So all that money that we do on that exit fee, it goes to our reserve account, and that usually pays for renovations and uh, maintenance and any kind of repairs of the campus. And only once did we have in the history of 27 years um, at the Glenview did we ever have a special assessment. So usually that uh, exit fee pays for all of the renovations and we've really not had to use uh, special assessments too much. I understand that Glenview uh, has referenced previously individuals own their own property. For the other units, do you own your own property or is it the option to occupy the property? Like Great question. Same. You want to take it, Jennifer? Very good question. He was asking about ownership and, and the other communities other than Glenview. Um, no, you do not own the property. It is not deeded ownership. Um, that's true for the terraces. It's not ownership. For Shell Point as well, you are buying life care. You do not own the property. Yeah, go into a little more detail, um, Fred, if you want to, about what that means. Um, at Sienna Lakes, you do not own it either, um, which really benefits you as well because you don't have to worry about homeowners insurance. You only need renters insurance to cover your contents only. The community takes care of everything else. And with the, you not having ownership, we also don't have. Um, association fees or assessments either. The community and the management manages everything in the community based on your monthly fee, which really supports that. Um, yeah, I'm going to go back to what I was saying before, okay? My situation, my mother-in-law was 90, her husband, they are in a place up in Michigan. And when they got in there, he didn't have Alzheimer's, okay? And uh, she was in better health than she is now. Sure. Right? So now the situation is that her daughters, okay, are up there, and they will have to uh, put the man in um, memory care, okay, take him out of her unit, which is a two-bedroom, take him out, okay? $8,000 a month in the same complex, whatever, 8000 well, it won't be long before the money is all gone, okay? Um, and that's why I said, would they like kick her out? You know what I mean? Is she I in a CCR? Is she in a CCRC or is she in a rental community? That's an important piece yeah, of the pie. I mean, that's that's well, know, the magic question. Dollars a month is going to deplete really quickly. You know, um, and you never can tell how long somebody's going to live with Alzheimer's or whatever. Is it a year? You got you've got to find that one piece out because if she's not in a continuing care retirement community where they put a massive amount of money down, 
um, and they're just in a rental, A, she can probably find a, le a, a lower price memory care. Um, that's very high. I don't know about for Michigan, but right. yeah, that's high. I mean, that does seem high for Michigan. Yeah. yeah. So that's. I haven't been there, so I don't know what the place looks like. You know? The best question to ask is is she in a rental or is it a CCRC? That's because if she's in a rental, then the answer is yes. They will have to ask her to leave. Yeah, but, but these are things we all have to look at. You know, the worst mm -hmm. case scenario, what's going to happen? That's the beautiful yeah. thing about looking yeah. at a community like this. I always make the joke that no one's going to take care of me when I get older. Like I don't have kids, and my dog certainly are not going to pitch in <laughs> at all. <laughs> So uh, I've always said that I'm going to be looking at continuing care retirement communities. The part that I was going to ask you to kind of dive in on is um, it's almost like a long, it's not almost, it is, it's long-term care insurance. That's, that's what it is. Yeah. You know, how many in the room have long-term care insurance? Then you're all here for a really good reason because this is your second option. The problem is you really do have to look at this now while you're healthy because and we'll, i'll ask I, really lynn I, I, it's her turn to talk but this is gonna it's gonna blow up a lot of questions um because how many of us really want to stay in our home and age in place okay some of you are not, you're here also for the right reasons but Lynn, um, talk to us about what a continuing care retirement community without walls is and how it can help you stay in your home and age in place. Okay, so a lot of folks, you know, I've, been, I've been in senior living for years and there is a majority of people that come to me and say, I want to stay in my own home. I don't want to downsize. I love my stuff and I've got a lot of stuff. Or um, I live in my favorite retirement community um, and you're not going to give me the view that I have at home. So this is an option for folks that have decided I want to stay in my home. I want to release the, the burden of, of care for my children. I want to protect my assets just like all of these communities do. They help you to plan and protect your assets and you want peace of mind that you're covered when the time comes. So continuing care at home um, pro products have been around for since 1990. Ours has been around about seven and a half, eight years um, for folks that want to stay in ho at home. It's a membership-based program. Just like if you were to move to a community, there is an entrance fee. We call it a membership fee. Um, you have samples in your packet that you can take a look at later. Um, it's not as much, of course, because it's, there's no brick, bricks and sticks. You are in your own home. You're still maintaining your own home. You're still paying your taxes, utilities, preparing your own meals, etc. cetera. Um, so you would also pay a monthly fee. So you're investing in the care that you're going to get in the future. Very much like Amanda said, it's an insurance type product. Um, we're still regulated through the Office of Insurance Regulation. We have to guarantee refunds. We have to guarantee liquid reserve to all of our members. Um, you still have to pass the financial and the physical. We Exactly, thank you, Amanda. Um, it is more stringent than moving to a community. We need to make sure you can maintain your home. I've had people apply that couldn't get through that phase because we couldn't. they couldn't ensure that they were gonna be able to maintain their home over the years and spit with their income. So we're also going to look at a five-year look back in your health records. So we are a little bit more stringent with that. And, it's, and the assessment, the initial assessment, really to um, take a look at your general health and rule out uh, dementia for obvious reasons, um, Alzheimer's, neurological disorders. Just like insurance, you have to join when you're healthy. Mm -hmm. So now is the time to consider that plan. And that's really the case with all of them. You, you've got to be healthy. Go ahead. One thing, I, I can't speak for anybody but Shell Point, but you do enter our CCRC as independent living. All that means for us is that you have to be able to maintain uh, an independent environment safely. So if you can live alone, and a lot of people um, just have a diagnosis of dementia or Parkinson's, and they some CCRCs that would eliminate you with Shell Point if you can still live independently safely you meet criteria and so um, the financial criteria that you have to meet you know is different for everyone and but there's a financial 
um, test, and there is also a medical test that your physician can supply that, and then our doctors look it over. Um, the whole one of the big things that the reason you were even thinking about this is because you can't predict what the future is going to hold. You want to be able to have health care, whatever that is, without becoming bankrupt and having to um, not get care or get the care that you need or your spouse needs. It's heartbreaking. But I want to point out that one of the biggest reasons to continue in a community that is vibrant is because if you want to live in your home, if you want to stay independent, wherever that is, wherever you choose, the longer the, you need to have social connectedness. And that is one of the major pluses of a CCRC. Because statistics show that 50% um, reduction in mortality rates and the need for living in long-term skilled nursing and assisted living memory care, your mortality rate decreases by 50%. Your need for higher level of care decreases by 50% if you have meaningful social connectedness. This is one of the major contributors to your mental health, your physical health, your happiness, and how long you live. So that's one of the wonderful things about community is that not just somebody to go out to dinner with, but making meaningful connections in your with your neighbors, with your activity groups, with your spiritual connections, with you know, the social clubs and the activities, a place where you can belong and you can move through the seasons of life with people in a safety net to help you. I will add that if you have a membership for Senior Choice at Home, you have full access to their campus as well. So there's that socialization is available. I want to move down to Jenna, give her a chance to talk to. I keep calling you Jenna. Now it's like, yeah, you yeah, answered that. It does. Uh, Vanessa, uh, sorry. She actually looks like who, um, so yeah, you guys all like, totally look like <laughs> Sorry about that, Vanessa. <laughs> Tell us what's included in the monthly service fees um, at your community, and we can kind of go down the line, um, because they're all so very different. You can't make assumptions that everything's included. So they're, typically each community, they're going to give you a list of everything that's included in your monthly service fee. And ours looks like this. And I, I would think a lot of them are gonna be very similar in a lot of ways, but certainly different. One of which was that healthcare piece that we talked about. That's your big difference that's gonna vary community to community is what was included in the monthly service fee. We're a type A contract, so we include all the healthcare in your monthly service fee. But to dig into some of the, the smaller things, some of the, the other benefits of being in a community, um, dining, you're gonna have multiple dining venues. So the question to ask as you're touring places is how many dining venues? Can I try the food? Make sure that it's good quality food. And I would um, say most of your continuing care community should have the best food, I would say for all of us, because you're paying a lot of money to move in these types of communities. The food better be good. Um, but it's always the area we have the most challenges, right? Because food is one of those things where yep. it's always um, always a challenge. I don't care which community you're in. <laughs> Fitness center, things, um, different types of exercise classes. Um, your, your housekeeping typically is included in most of your communities. You know, what's going to vary is how often, how long the clean is. We iron your sheets. I'm not sure why we do, but we iron your sheets. I'm <laughs> um, not sure how long that'll go on. <laughs> Um, your transportation services, that's a big one, place to place. Um, I, would, I would think most places would include your transportation for you. Your maintenance, that is one of the number one reasons, other than healthcare, that I have people coming to me early on. They're tired of the upkeep of their home. A lot of our clients do have two homes, not all do, but they're dealing with homes up north, dealing with homes here. When hurricane season's here, they gotta worry about the home. So home maintenance is one of the big drivers people are making a move to continuing care communities sooner than later because they're just tired of the upkeep of their home. Um, and then it'll vary, again, place to place, but your cable packages, your internet packages, those are big things now that are important to people that are included in your monthly service fee. Um, and then I will, just a little plug for, for the terraces, um, we do have valet service. Uh, we have private garages for every single residence and the garages are parked towards the back of the community. So we actually have valet service that will um, unload your groceries for you and park your car for you. So it's, it's something that's a little unique. But again, every community is different, but your big ones are gonna be, you know, your healthcare, your dining, your housekeeping, your transportation, and your maintenance are, are some of your big ones. We have the same amenities at the Glen Care, I mean, at the Glen View. 
um, as you mentioned, but we also have another kind of layer. We're part of the Pelican Bay community, and with the Pelican Bay community, there's another onslaught of amenities that go there, and being part of the Pelican Bay community means that there's a three-mile private beach. You have four restaurants on the beach. You have a shuttle service that takes you to the beach. You don't have to bring your chairs, no umbrellas. Everything is there for you, so it's really nice. They also have a really good community center, and it's not just the fitness center uh, that's so wonderful, but it also has a cultural as well as a social. So we have a lot of meetings, you know, the uh, men's club meets there, you know, a lot of various social uh, things that go there. The Glenview also, well, we do have fine dining. We have a five-star chef and a full-time baker, but we also believe that people really like not just piped-in music when they, when they eat, but they really want to have, you know, real music. And so we spend a lot of money on entertainment. In fact, our Mondays at the Glenview start off with a mobile bar in our Glenview room, free drinks with appetizers, and always somebody that comes from the Naples Artiste. Or just a couple of weeks ago, we had Randy Dowling. He sold out Carnegie Hall twice. So we really do have fine, fine music and a lot of activities. That's how we start our week, and how we end our week is on Sundays, and it's always with a very big brunch, lots of grandchildren and great-grandchildren there. Activities is one of those other big ones. I'm sorry I missed. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, we, I feel like we have everything that was mentioned. Um, the only, it's really easier to say what's not included, and that is if you're an independent living, your food is not included, so, because some people will want to eat out, some people are still cooking, so that will be up to you. Although we do have fine dining, we have five restaurants available, social clubs, uh, we have an 18-hole Audubon golf course. Uh, we have a $20 million um, Tribute Arts Center that's being already been broken ground. It'll be unlike anything in the country for performing arts, visual arts, um, and uh, creative arts. We are just broken ground on a brand new um, Guild Nursing Medical Center, which will be ready in two years. We'll have all private rooms. We have five physicians on staff, five nurse practitioners. We have our own x-ray, our own dentist. We have our own lab work, uh, where you can get your labs in. We have 20, <laughs> 20 specialty physicians from outside the community that are residents. In there our will community. be a test later. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, we are, our emphasis, you know, is medical, so you, we have eight, about 85, 90% of all your medical needs can be met right on our campus. This one is our biggest amenities, as well as the, we have 70 activity groups. If we don't have it and you want to start it, we'll start it. So we're on the river. Uh, we have lagoon views. We have, a, you can bring your boat up to 42 foot to a private marina, no extra charge. These are just a few of the things. Try to keep it. Very similar to all the other communities, it seems like most of the amenities we also have at Siena Lakes. On our 30-acre campus, we too are almost a boutique-sized community with only 350 independent living apartments, and we will have 66 continuing care, all private spaces as well. Um, our community is all walkable, that our buildings connect into each other, and aside from all the activities and the restaurants, on the community that is part of your monthly package, local transportation, uh, your taxes are included in that as well. We also are a gated community, but our security staff that's there 24 hours a day are also licensed medical first responders. So they can respond to any medical emergency around the clock. Um, if you have a light bulb that goes out at two o'clock in the morning, you can call the 24 hour concierge and ask for your light bulb to re be replaced. Um, full maintenance on everything we provide you, including all of your appliances. And I'll give you a personal example of how well that works. My parents live at Fox Run in Novi, Michigan, which is an Erickson community where I've spent the last 18 years developing that campus. In a couple weeks, they'll be there for 10 years. Wow. Last Thanksgiving, they were 20 minutes late for dinner at my sister's house because they realized their refrigerator went out. They called the concierge. Within 20 minutes, I think it was 15 actually, they were up with a temporary refrigerator, the maintenance staff, and my parents were there helping them transfer everything in. Within a week, they had a brand new refrigerator 
and it did not cost them anything. Those are the services that they appreciate most, not having to worry about maintenance or replacing appliances that is all part of their monthly service package. Um, aside from assisted living, memory care, and nursing, skilled nursing on site, we will also have a full-time doctor just for the people who live at Sienna Lakes. That is a doctor's office and medical practice, again, just for the people that live there. It's your choice to maintain your own current doctor, use us as a secondary, or move with us full time. People usually after a year and a half to two years switch over to us full time after moving in because they appreciate the convenience of same day appointments, walking to the doctor, instead of driving across town or sitting in um, a waiting room. And our medical appointments with the doctor are scheduled every 25 minutes. So that is a wonderful relationship that we want you to have, and we recognize how important it is to have that extra time to spend with your doctor. Um, something else that as people are um, reserving with us and wanting to move in, um, we're already 78% reserved for phase one, which will be opening up in the spring of 21, which is 18 months away. Can you believe that? People are like asking us. It's also those same pioneer residents that are moving in who are gonna help us plan the activities and events that they want on the campus in their home. In 30 acres, we don't have the space for a golf course, but we will have a nine hole putting green and a couple of bocce courts, but we will have a relationship with an outside golf course and golf community that our residents can call the concierge and say, I'd like to play golf, can you arrange reservations for me? We will do that for you as well. Uh, I am Sienna Lakes, and we are a type C. Okay, and um, the lady with the blonde hair. Shell Point? Yeah, Shell Point, you're a type A. We they have, have four contracts. We have four contracts. Mm -hmm. okay. So depending upon the contract, that will determine not only your entrance fee, mm -hmm. quote, it's not a purchase, but it's an entrance fee. You can get some portion back. The higher amount you get back, the more amount is your entrance. Okay. You can, you can run this show now, you know it. Up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got it. <laughs> but, but my question is, because it's really essential, is that in the Type C, if I want to stay in an apartment by myself and I want my husband to go to memory care, because I don't want to deal with that, I want to go visit him, but I want to have my own sure. life. In a Type C, I'm going to be paying my monthly fee and another monthly fee for him. Mm -hmm. So instead of being six thousand a month, it's going to go up to maybe twelve thousand a month. Where it is in a Type A, if I'm paying six thousand a month and he goes to memory care, I'm still paying the six thousand. Is that my correct understanding? The question there is, you are correct. In a Type C. Would you have two monthly fees, and could they both be $6,000? Not at Sienna Lakes, maybe at some other communities, locally it is. Mm -hmm. Our monthly fees in independent living start at 3,400. For one person. For one person, and only 1,100 for a second person. So 5,000 a month for two people, right? Depending on what floor. And that second correct. person fee will yes. go away when he moves. Okay. Right, so and a new fee will month. be incurred, you are and correct. he's gonna be charged another 35 well, now or whatever level of care a second person is receiving okay, so maybe at that point so now right. i'm talking eight thousand a month right okay but if i get the type a then it's still going to be the 35 plus eleven thousand. it's still going to be like five thousand instead of seven thousand a month right okay so again depending on the community okay, but it makes it more sense then to get a type a if you're worried about your fees kind of predictable. Is that, is, is my, I don't know if I'm thinking. If you have the money to afford it. They're all very different. Okay. Because Type A's are gonna cost fee. more. Okay. And, and it gives you guarantee. Type A is absolutely, How it often is the Royal Royce. And you have Type A. How often she has all. She has all of them. Yeah, she has many options. She yeah, has all. That's nice. Yeah. But how often is that monthly fee going to go up?
You know, that's a really good question there. How often does the monthly fee go up? And typically, they're reviewed annually during the budget process. Um, we, I don't know about anybody else, I want to speak for anybody else, but that's a really good question. And in the brochure that I provided you, if anybody wants additional information about Santa Lakes, I put this in here. But I also included this article from the New York Times that references if you are visiting a community, ask these seven important questions. And what's the occupancy rate? How much does the monthly fee increase? What's the debt rating? How profitable it is your community? How much money is spent on upkeep? Does the community have a cash reserve? How much influence do you as a resident have? Those, that was all published in the New York Times and we referenced that. It's a great thing to ask. So on the monthly fee, on average, I don't know about everybody else, anywhere from two to three percent of an increase you should anticipate annually. annually. And we also provide in our brochure a full worksheet for you to write down what you're spending at home mm -hmm. and compare it to what our monthly fees are. And I can tell you locally, we're seeing about from our reserves and our depositors, they're going to save about 15 percent because they're giving up so many additional fees living locally because you won't need homeowners insurance, you won't need flood insurance, you won't need a bug guy, a pool guy, a power washing guy, you won't need all those additional services that are part of your monthly fee. And I'm sure everybody else here can compare that very similarly. What is similar. the average age of people in these communities? Well, we're not open yet. So in Santa Lakes, <laughs> our average age of the person moving in is 77. The average, it's very it is. You have it to, is. You have to be very independent, and none of us have a crystal ball, so the sooner... And we don't require a doctor's exam for you to move in. We don't That's have that at unique. all. Yeah. So imagine 18 years from now, that average age of 77 could be 78 or 79 when they're actually moving in. We also have an additional 250 people on our priority list with us. That average age is 72. And our office is just opened in January. Did you, yours is a little different for the average. Yeah, our average age is 74. We have residents from 50 um, and to 100. I think they just turned 108 last month. So their average age is 74. And there's a really good point about when you go investigate communities, really look and see what is the average increase in monthly maintenance fees. For Shell Point, I can speak for us, the last 10 years, our average increase has been 1.9%. Over the last 25 years, it's been about 3%. So this is really important because the whole point of this is to have a predictable monthly payment so that you can plan for the future. Yes, and um, just knowing the market, and I do all the competitive analysis every year, um, I would say just as a whole, when you look at the continuing care communities around town, on average, you do see about 3%. Um, and then if you're looking at the average age and you're including people in the care areas, um, you know, when you start to look at industry averages, you actually do find your continuing care at, on average as a whole, once they're open and operating, tends to be closer to about 82, 83. Um, and that is true for the terraces as well. Um, and just as an industry average, but it does vary community to community, but just to give you some, some general and averages. Small. You're much smaller than a show point. Right. right. And I will say one thing, you know, it, it, we all ask about this average age, but I've seen 90 year olds that can run circles around me. And I've seen 70 year olds that are in more shape than an average 90 year old. So don't look at that number so much as when you walk into these communities, what does it feel like? Does it feel good to you? Does it feel like home? That might not necessarily be a question that you need to have on your top 10 list. You know what I mean? Is it, does it make sense to compare prices from the sense of, are things going to be much more expensive than Naples than if I go up to Cape Coral? Or well, based on what she just said about Michigan. Or do you guys talk to one another and yeah. you just, you make everything about the same price? I mean, you will find um, a price difference from the Naples market to the Fort Myers market, certainly. 
Um, but it just, again, it just depends on the type of contract they're offering. Um, so that's really what's going to drive that price. But you do see a price difference coming from the Naples market down to the Fort Myers market. As same Cape with Coral. home values. Same Cape Coral, same yep. thing. Our, our monthly fee at the Glenview did not go up this year. But I always tell people to consider at least 2% a year. But we're a nonprofit. We're not faith based, but we are a nonprofit. So, you know, we um, have reserves, and obviously uh, I alluded to that earlier, but really the, um, the, the monthly fee for us is um, trying to keep it as low as possible. Why? As a nonprofit, our board is made up of just homeowners. We don't have a, uh, somebody on that is a, a good well doer, doctor, or physician, or uh, uh, attorney, or anything like that. We actually just have a board of five, and they have to be residents. So our whole emphasis is just to be budget neutral. When you take a look at our audits, you know, our, our wine is $4.95. People say, why is it so low? Because everybody that's a homeowner there says, why would we want to make money off of ourselves? We have, you know, the reserves to pay for the maintenance, but we don't need to make money off of ourselves. So as a nonprofit, we really keep on pretty much budget neutral, and this year we did not have an increase. Don't outprice Naples just because it's in Naples. People have been very surprised to learn that our monthly fee started at 3400 And I think that's one of the reasons why so many people have been attracted to us, because our monthly fees are affordable. And we are in the heart of North Naples. It's a great ideal location that really is hitting us well. But we are attracting people from Winter Haven across the ocean side um, down to Fort Myers and Estero coming to Naples because they all want to move into a brand new community at the same time instead of moving into a community where friendships have already been started. And we've been having events every <coughs> single month for reserves to come in to meet their neighbors and start those relationships already. And that's a great appeal for many people who want to move into a community and aren't ready yet, want a little bit more time to plan. Since ours is not opening for 18 more months, they appreciate that. Um, something that doesn't cost you anything, we also have another service called the Erickson Realty and Moving Services, where we can visit you in your home, one of my two sales counselors, and they could put a plan together to help you with your move. So when it is time to move, you're not feeling overwhelmed with, all that extra stuff and what do I do with it? We have a whole network of people who can help and support you. If it's floor planning with furniture and downsizing with estate sales or donations or finding a realtor in your neighborhood, we have that network. In fact, we created that program up in Michigan a dozen years ago when the economy hit. And that's gone nationwide with our company, but other communities and companies are starting that exact same service that we created 12 years ago. So in the heart of Naples, we are very affordable. So keep that in mind. Okay. My, my question is, since we have uh, all experienced Hurricane Irma, mm -hmm. and we also probably will have more storms and what have you, what plans do you have in place to protect uh, people on your property and for the person that, uh, if you remain in your home, how did you uh, address that? Right? So Great question about how were we all prepared and designed to manage hurricanes and storms. Um, I know we'll pass this down because they have more experience. But also at Santa <laughs> Lake, we are the latest construction. February 5 hurricane. We are an all concrete structure. We have high impact windows and we have an emergency plan already in place and registered with the state of Florida as well. We do have experience at 19 other campuses that have managed hurricanes um, across state at our campus in Devonshire and also another campus in Houston at Eagles Trace. And I was part of a plan and with a company our size, we bring people in at a time when most towns or communities are being evacuated. We're bringing in additional staff to manage the residents in the community so no services are ever interrupted. We will have emergency backup power on all of our elevators, but also in our clubhouse. Our clubhouse is 60,000 square feet. That will be air conditioned and we can still feed our residents. 
continuing care will have emergency backup generators for the entire building. And our security staff will know who, what residents might be on oxygen, and we have emergency power in the hallways that they can run the courts to those residents that need it in independent living to support those services. I'd like to hear from the yeah, residents. Yeah, yeah, let's keep going. going. But, yes. but try to keep them kind of brief, because I... This will be brief. We're running this will be brief. What, 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 is it about a hurricane? No, no. Oh, well, yeah, that's yeah, what I want to hear. We're going to go through the hurricane. Per person. We're going to go through the hurricane question real quick, because you, you can make an appointment with him. I, I encourage you to. Go ahead. I, I, I'll be brief. Um, so obviously, if you're staying in your own home, you, you need to have a hurricane plan. One of the key uh, features of our program is you have a personal care coordinator that's assigned to you at the time that you join. This is a person who becomes your advocate, that knows you, knows your family, understands what your needs are, um, and stays in touch with you throughout the month, you know, um, planning visits and so forth. So obviously, when it comes to hurricane planning, she's working side by side with you to find out, first of all, what is your plan? Do you have family? Do you want to evacuate? Is that your plan? Um, she'll help you make those arrangements. And she'll help you get to one of our properties if need be. Um, for Hurricane Irma, we did take some of our members to Cape Coral, uh, where we have a full generator. We never even lost power in Cape Coral, which was... Um, you were a hurricane yeah. shelter. We were a shelter. And, and we did lose power, excuse me, in Cape Coral, not at Gulf Coast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, we also, and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the colonnade, which we are going to be building here in Estero um, at Corkscrew and Sandy Lane. Within the next couple of years, they haven't even broken ground yet, so if you haven't seen any construction, um, that will be also an op option for our members, as well as the preserve in Fort Myers. So we will have some um, facilities to um, accommodate our members if need be. But again, it's always, uh, it's always that one um, opportunity for us to work with our members and make sure that they do have a plan, and we help with that along the way. So. Um, oh, for uh, se 70 members per, per coordinator is um, right now the way all of the uh, continuing care at home programs work. And again, a lot of our members don't need care right now. But we do have a handful that are getting care on a regular basis. We'll get a run through the hurricane thing. Let's, okay, let's yeah. do the hurricane. So as far as uh, Shell Point, we've been around 50 years and we've weathered lots of hurricanes. Uh, we have shelters for independent living and separate shelters for people that need assisted living or in our skilled nursing, so they never have to leave the campus. Our new facility, we're building our six-story medical and skilled nursing center, will be um, rated, at, I think we're allowed to say to, to category four, because category five hurricane, I think, is unlimited, and I don't know what that would be, but we are the highest rating we could have, so uh, residents and wherever they are do not have to leave the campus. And same at the terraces um, of what they had mentioned. Um, you know, a lot of these communities um, now are putting in the high impact glass concrete block. Um, they all have emergency plans that are registered through the state of Florida. Um, we have the generator. Generators are not required in the care facilities through the state of Florida since the last big hurricane. Um, but then, of course, the elevators will be on backup generator and an individual plug in each one of your residents. Um, but they, they also do have to have an evacuation plan. Um, but I will say the terraces um, did not, uh, were not force mandated out, and they have not in the last six years um, had to evacuate. At the Glenview, we typically shelter in place. However, we had a mandatory evacuation, Pelican Bay did, um, and they came, the, the, the sheriff came and said, you're, you're gone. We took uh, 64 people, most of our people that were in independent living had decided to go on a vacation, go see family, go up north. But we did have 64 people that were decided to go along with us. We had made uh, three uh, reservations um, in Tallahassee, one in Fort, um, uh, Fort Lauderdale, as well as Orlando, because we really didn't know where that hurricane was going to go. We ended up being uh, going to uh, Orlando. We took um, 19 caregivers with us. We didn't have to because everybody else was pretty much, everybody is independent. But we're glad we did and we're going to continue to do that. Why? You know, when people get nervous, they uh, take their CPAP mask, but not their machine. 
they take their med box, but they only have two days of meds in there. So we were we brought up a lot of our nurses, a lot of our caregivers to assist. So we were writing the orders. I was one of them. I had my undergrad as in nursing, uh, active in Florida. But we uh, took people up uh, via Dolphin bus, and we stayed at the Marriott Hotel in Orlando. What about your skill? Our skill actually went to uh, Bay Shore, which is right there on Immokalee. That is another LCS community, um, life care service community. They had a hundred and it's a brand new, really building, 160 mile an hour winds. We took all of our skilled nursing up there. We brought every bed, every cart, everything uh, over there because they had their whole second floor with no furniture. So we brought everybody over there and we uh, then came back. Yes, sir. Amanda, uh, is your present book or your new senior living book give a, a, a low end rate to get into these various and other I'm so glad you asked that question. Oh, okay. So so there's two exciting things about the new book, and one of them is that I've added the continuing care retirement communities. I've added a double page spread of definitions that will tell you what a contract A, B, and C is. So if you didn't absorb that today, you can look. There's also a column in the grids that tells you whether it's an A, B, or a C. And like in Shell Point's case, it lists that they are all three. Um, the, the continuing care retirement communities, it's, it's really their choice whether they wanna give me a starting price range, but most of them do. Um, and that's a, it's a great question and you can find it in the grids. So the starting point and also the amount of financial resources above that? Well, that because be they're all different, it, that, that would be incredibly hard. So it does have a starting price range, like a starting entry fee, if you well, will. it's generally related, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Somewhat. Mm -hmm. Now, if it's 200000 getting in, you probably have to have another 200000 plus whatever. Depends. Just on the yeah. size of the residence too. So, so pull out your books. This is a this is a great learning experience for us. Uh, pull out these beautiful new books. Uh, Look how colorful. <laughs> so if you flip to page two hundred and two hundred one, that's where the new continuing care retirement definitions are. I don't think we got. Didn't. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> and then if you flip the page, no, no, it's okay, I'll look at it. 200 and 201, and then on page 202, 203, you'll see the contract types over here, the very last bullet point. Minimum monthly fee is listed for almost all of them and then minimum entrance fee. Now, if they have all three contract types, that's gonna be their C, because that's the least expensive to get in, correct? And then the A, you know, if they're, if they're only a type A, then you're gonna see those are gonna be more expensive. Now, that will not, we couldn't fit that into a book if we tried. <laughs> That just depends on so many things. <laughs> you, you're going to have to do a one on one with these folks, and they definitely want to be a part of that with you. Yes, ma'am. I'm so sorry. Our parking is included and it's all covered, and we do allow pets. No extra fee. We have a dog park. Another really great place to find that is in your senior's blue book. <laughs> <laughs> you got everybody allows pets. We allow yeah. Everybody loves. Okay. This is what I wanted to know. Okay. Um, as far as this uh, minimum monthly fee, is that per person or per unit? Our minimum fee for a one bedroom is $3,005, and that is for a single. It goes up with a double Y because um, your health care is in there as well as your um, meal plan is in there. So it only goes up by that those two additional charges. It's actually per person. So yes. Now some, some people have 
going to be different than the second person fee, right? Correct. 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 Yes. Yeah. Okay. So All your right. first person fee is typically tied to the size residence that you have. The larger the size residence, the larger the size your monthly fee will be. And then they will have a second person monthly fee, which is typically much less, but it depends upon where you go. Uh, for example, our first person fee would be around $3,400, and the second person fee would be $1,200. Okay, so at Shell Point, we're a little different too. Um, our low, our entrance fee for the life care contract, the one that most people want, the, lo the entrance fee, the lowest one is $125,000, and the monthly maintenance fee is only $1,679. That is the smallest unit with the least desirable, I guess, lo uh, location, all the way up to um, a half a million or $1.2 million for the deep access uh, three bedroom executive homes with a uh, water access for your boat and um, 5,900 square foot. So you have from the tiny to the large something for every budget. So really it's it's a blanket. You really need to investigate the communities and see you know what there is. There's just too much to put in one little bit. But it's such a wide variety. There's something for everybody's budget. None of those have food. Only at assisted living. Shell Point is the, I, the only one up here right now where food's not included. And, and they do include it when you go into assisted living, you just have a little bit of a surcharge. Mm -hmm. I, I just thought it would be 1600 Oh, yeah. That's yeah. without food. Right. Okay, can pay for food. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a beautiful restaurant. Oh, yeah. yeah. At Santa Lakes, our monthly fee started at 3400 and they could go up to 5200 depending on which of the 23 square, um, floor plans we offer. They range anywhere from 1,200 square feet to 2,300 second square person, feet. The that second that person fee, no matter what floor plan, only $1,100. And each person is not given a meal of the day, it's a food allowance every month for you to use at any of our restaurants on campus. That'll be $450 per person per month and as part of that monthly service fee. You can use it for drinks at the bar. You can have a wine at the table. You can even bring a bottle of wine to the table. We'll cork it for you at no fee. That monthly food allowance also can be used for family and friends joining you as well, or carry out if you choose. Okay. I do volunteer work with hospitals, so I see a lot of units with memory care. Mm -hmm. I also know there is a place in Sarasota that works positively with the memory care people, reading books like Neil Bredesen's book at the end of the Alzheimer's. Dr. Perlmutter, who used to be in Naples, has retired. Which of your communities really is up on the latest, latest information on memory care? I'm gonna of say they all are. Yeah, yeah. They they all I mean, this, this is such a hot topic right now, the TIPA snow certification. I mean, we could go into so much detail, but the, these are high, very high-end communities, and they definitely, yeah. There, there are positive things that you can do, rather. All the, yeah. 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 What was your question? Well, in the Sonia, uh, there's going to be a big seminar coming up. Mine? Oh, yeah. Mine? Mine? <laughs> <laughs> I went. this program? Well, no, it's, a, it's, it's really interesting because they change. And, and different ones will change. And then you have to have income to the tune of one, one and a half times. I it's it's going to change with the economy is what Fred exactly. just informed me. But also, um, some of them will say to you, look, at, sit down with us. We want to look at your financial situation and your particular mm -hmm. situation. My husband is 90 years old and I'm 70. 
So I'm going to live 20 years longer than he and I'm worried about him. And they say, if you're looking at these now when he's 90, yeah. get on the horse. <laughs> he's terrific. He's better than I am. But I mean, Exhibit A, right? What I was saying? Yeah. Right. And he won't go. He will not go. He hates the idea. You need to talk to her. Yeah, I don't know how to get <laughs> I need to talk to her. But, but they, two of the communities that said, look, um, let's, let us talk to you about your specific situation because we're not, we're worried about the money, but we're not worried about that when we have a nine-year-old that he's not like it in the next two, three years, not going to be here. It, it's not yeah, about going to be paid yeah. for the next 20 years. So, so one, one of the questions, because I want to make sure Lynn gets enough face time here, because this program is so very, very unique. Tell tell the folks that are out there, if you, if you are a member of Senior Choice at Home, and one of you needs to go into memory care or assisted living, tell us how that works and how amazing it is. Mm. It's a big deal. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. And it is, um, it is huge um, because we have some members that are living that out right now. So um, you're obviously in your home. You're paying a monthly fee. I'm just going to say $500. That it's the highest you'll pay is about $583. Um, any health care you need in your home at that point, you're paying your monthly fee and you're getting as much care as you need. So your husband may need more care than you sooner. As much care as he needs will come to the home for his monthly fee. Now, we've had some, resi some members that had to move to a higher level of care. We're going to keep you in your home until it's not safe to do that anymore if it doesn't make sense if you need 24-7 care. So we have members that have moved out to a memory care community paying six, that charges $6,900 a month. They pay 500 and something for their monthly fee. So you can't beat that. I mean, do we know that's gonna happen? We don't, we that, don't know. That's a, ga that, yeah, that's a gamble family. where they lose and you win. And, and if, if your husband needed to move to a higher level of care, that we have a couple that went through that same thing, that one is still at home, the other one did have to to go to a higher level for memory support because again you know um we and at that we higher get, level at the higher you're not level. paying 6900 you're, nope. paying, you're paying your two. monthly fee with right. this program you pay one you're going to pay an entrance be a membership but it's fee. very minimal it is very if you if you look at the cost of of what healthcare costs now and you already know some of the numbers you've already said uh, if you look at what it would cost for a year in an assisted living community, our, in, our membership fees are less than a year. So, um, and do we know if you're going to need it? That's, that's, I, I think it's better to, you know, have it, not need it, than to need it and not have it. Um, you know, and exactly. And especially with hers, because there's that, it, it is a huge risk that they're taking. They, they need you to stay in your home, really. Um, the whole point is for you to stay in your home. They do that five-year look back to make sure that your health is in check. So mm -hmm. the sooner you at least look at something like that, and it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't cost anything to look. And having that advocate in your corner, I think about the value of having a personal care coordinator. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many of you have kids that come around when you need help. I'm an advocate for my mother. Um, I've been a guardian as well. So I understand mm -hmm. what it's like to be in the hospital and not understand how to navigate through. Um, is that care manager or case manager really putting together a safe plan for me to return to my home? Well, our care coordinators are in the hospitals making sure that there is already a plan to get you home safely. Why? Because our goal is to keep you in your home, keep you independent. So we wanna make sure you are getting the therapies that you need before you go home and that you have the support. Go ahead and address, there. this is another one of my favorite points, and just for the sake of time, I'm sorry mm -hmm. if I'm jumping okay. in here. Let me ask. No, that's right. This is another question for her because it's really important. Let's say that I sign up with my membership here, but my children are up in Ohio and I want to move up there. Can I still stay in your program and how does that work? Great. That, that's a great question. In fact, when the program first started, we didn't have portability and now we have it because we know this is important. Uh, when I decline, my daughter lives in Wisconsin, she wants me closer. So we provide portability, and that means a one-time fee when you decide to leave the state, 
of $5,000 and we will continue to, to coordinate your care through um, agencies wherever it is that you go. Now we do have snowbirds. Do we have any snowbirds in the room here? We Not still yet. Have, we have members <laughs> that, are, that do spend some winters up north. So prior to them going, our, that's when the care coordinator starts locating services. Maybe they don't need care, but what if something happens while they're out of state? So we coordinate all of that from here. We make sure that you have the support that you need, the same support that you would get here. Amanda, what is that next thing seminar? Oh, I'm so tickled. Yeah. You have a question. <laughs> I'll make this quick. The ad's in the book, but mark your calendars because we have one in Lee and one in Collier. The one in Collier County is January the 7th, and it's at St. John Evangelist Church. The second one is February 18th, and it's in Lee County at Alma Vita Living, 9 to 3. On gladiolus. It'll cover every. That's an all-day seminar, continental breakfast, and lunch included. Raffle prizes, fun, fun, fun. There's going to be 40, 50 vendors or more each of those. So what page do you have that on? It's in the front. Like maybe three, four, five. What was your question? Yeah, my, my question is uh, for you, is that Lynn. Lynn? Okay. Um, what services do you actually provide when you say medical services in the home? What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. So any services that you would get that, through a home care company. So um, custodial care. So activities of daily living, such as dressing, bathing, if you need it. Suppose you have just a short term an injury, now you've broken your leg and you need some extra support, we'll come in immediately with care for you. And it could be temporary, it could be, you know, permanent. And that's just, in addition to the, the membership. Right, and that's all covered through your monthly fee. Now initially you're getting the care coordinator, you're also getting an emergency response system. We'll do a home assessment and a wellness assessment. We want to make sure you're in a safe What about a second person fee with you? Um, it, each, good question, each person is their own, on their own. So you <laughs> join separately. You become, each become a member. We have some spouses that may not qualify for our traditional all-inclusive program. So not to get things um, complicated, but we do offer different options for that. We might all, all not offer the traditional all-inclusive, but you would still get some type of care, and that is a whole different seminar. Yeah. Okay. There is actually seminars just on this because it is such a unique program. And yes, and in your flyers, there are, I mean, in your program there, there are flyers with upcoming presentations, and we also do home visits, and we have you, you know, we can meet you anywhere. I, I want to ask Vanessa one more question, because there are certain questions that I think are really important that we need to try to squeeze in. Talk to us about the tax benefits of looking into, and we, we almost need to strike the word buy-in from right. the record, because you're not really buying it. So I always say investing in. What are the tax benefits of investing in a continuous care retirement community? Yes, yeah, so this falls under the medical tax deductions, and when you pay an entrance fee, the government looks favorably upon that because you're investing in your future health care. So it depends, right, on every one of your individual circumstances, what the communities do. I know the ones I've all worked at, and I've worked at many, will provide you with a letter once you've paid an entire entrance fee at the beginning of the year that you turn into your tax advisor, and it's stating that you've paid an entrance fee and a portion of your entrance fee can be used towards your medical tax deduction. Um, on average, I've seen it you know, be from 20% up to 40% of your initial investment into your, your entrance fee. And then on a annual ongoing basis, a portion of your monthly fee, and again, I've seen it range from $1,000 to $5,000, can also be used on an annual basis towards, again, your medical tax deduction. Um, so it varies based upon the type of contract, but we'll provide you the letter that you would then take to your tax advisor and they can help interpret your unique situation. But many people don't know that the entrance fee and the monthly service fee can be credited towards that. Can I say something about that? Sure. That was a big draw to a lot of people at the last seminar. Mm -hmm. I checked with three different tax attorneys and I checked with my own accountant who really, really, really careful maintenance fee 
when you get that letter that's 20%, oh, that looks great, but it's not 20% that you can actually deduct. In the first year with the, with the maintenance fee, that's the one year that it might be good. So let's say you're buying something at 500,000. 20% of that. Sorry. 20% of that is like 100,000. That 100,000 has to be X amount over your annual just gross income. And that portion you can take. And that portion then will help you with your she should be up here. With your maintenance, <laughs> with, with, with your, uh, what did you call it, your maximum minimum amount that you can take out. Sure. So it's really good and helpful in the first year. Mm -hmm. The second year, the maintenance fees, again, apply that 20%, which they usually use, and it looks great when you look at it. I have a number of friends in Bentley and in a couple other places that are taking that 20% and deducting it. If they ever get audited, they're going to be hit with megabucks. What you can do again is you take that and you have to do it over 25%, that figure, over your adjusted income. And most people, especially if you're in you know, 150 to 200,000 and over, will not qualify, won't help them at all. So do not, under any circumstances, get in these communities for the purpose of using it as an income tax deduction. I would agree with you. I would not make that be the number one driver to move to a community. Definitely not the number one. And it's complicated. <laughs> and we tell people that we are not tax advisors, and that's why we give the letter. And each each individual circumstances are very unique and different. <coughs> um, but at least it's something that you're aware of, and it's something that um, you can certainly talk to your own advisor about. It sounds about. great. It sounds yeah. great. But in all practicality, don't do it. You can be your but be aware of it, don't you know, because some people it may help, you know, but definitely see your account. And the first year it will and it will help people with the maximum minimum contribution. The first year. That thereafter you will hear. You and I are gonna talk about you running this next time, <laughs> it's, it's, it's just I, I spent the time you get it. learning you and get I it. everybody else to have I love it. I want you to invest some time speaking with her. That might be something your husband yes. will be open to. Yes. And we're all here to help each other, for sure. Does anyone have any final questions? Yes, ma'am? Does your product apply to condos? Um, actually, that is a great question. Do, do we apply to condos? You know what some, some of our seasons citizens have been doing is uh, choosing a rental community where they can get the support of housekeeping, some delicious meals, we go to them. So we go wherever you are, whatever you call home. Now, if you move to a CCRC, um, that's a whole different product. It's a different contract. Should you choose one of our CCRCs, not to complicate matters, but we do have a, um, a an addendum that you would actually get a credit toward your um, member entrance fee. So, but yes, anywhere you call home, if it's a rent, if it's a condo, if it's a it's a house, if, if it's a senior community, independent living, that's a rental, we can come to you and you don't have to move to that next level of care. Interesting. So great question, thank you. Okay, so there are two flyers that I left with you today that I think they're on the table, so they were, that have additional programs that are coming up. Please don't show up here next month because <laughs> these are reoccurring, same day, same time. We're going to start this series back up in January. I think most of you are on my email list. I send out an email that has all of the events that we have coming up, all the SVB universities. So keep an eye out for that because we're not going to stop through the months of November and December. It just happens to fall in holiday months here. But thank you so much. It's been fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.